Hey Jake, King Friday here. Uh, sorry about the camera angle, driving. Um, listening to your podcast, I heard you describe somebody again as being high level, and I just wondered if you could clarify a bit what high level means to you. Um, I think it's often followed up by how much money somebody has, but I think there's got to be more to it than financial success. Um, I'd love to hear you riff on that a little bit more. Thanks. I think that's a great question. And I think that it's, I'd be curious to know what everybody or the majority of people's perspective on when they hear that term would be. Do you think that when uh, people say high level, where does your head go? Or does it depend who's saying it? It depends. It depends on who's hearing it. Because like I said, I mean, the, the, the craziest thing is think about any word that you use in any language. Like you you have to know what it means. Like you're, you're, you're taught what it means. There's some sort of meaning that's applied to it. So a word doesn't have any value or any meaning until you add meaning to it. Even with experiences in your life, like whatever happens, like a lot of things, a lot of times people think something happens to them. Well, what if it happens for them, right? So all I did was sw switch the meaning, right? So like, let's say to give you an example of how I would answer that question is if I go to a track and all of a sudden things did not go my way, did the race happen to me or to happen for me? Because it happened to me, I'm a victim, right? So if I just label that race, let's say a race weekend, just nothing went my way. I expected to be top five and I got 20th the whole weekend. Well, um, the meaning I placed on it now, because of my perspective and meaning, uh, forces me into a victim mindset. So now all of a sudden that whole experience has a completely different value than if I changed the meaning to it and said, well, this happened for me. And now all of a sudden I have 11 things, 11 bullet point things I can work on after doing a debrief with myself. I realize there's 11 areas or five or two, even if there's one areas that I can work on. Now that same exact experience completely changes because I changed my perspective and the meaning I place on it. And now all of a sudden I've got some tools or some opportunities I can focus on to become a better athlete next time I go to the track. Today for 12 days of Moto Academy Christmas, we are giving away an entire year of Moto Academy classes. An entire year. So you wanna to go to 12 of them? Go to 12 of them for free. How much would that be worth? 12 times three, 36 maybe? 3,600 bucks? That's quite a bit of money to save. Club.themotoacademy.com. Get in the app tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna pick one lucky subscriber to get an entire year free of classes. And then on Christmas day, in two more days, we're giving away a free trip that you can win from anywhere in the world to fly to Florida in March to go to Daytona Supercross and to a Moto Academy class and to train one-on-one -on -one with myself and the Moto Academy team. Club.themotoacademy.com. Join us tonight. Not only is the difference, is there a difference between thinking and believing that the things are happening for you and not to you? the for you, things happening for you is not only a higher level, I'm talking, it's thousands of levels above it's like things happening to yeah. you. It's not, it's infinite levels above mm -hmm. because it's a completely, completely, completely different wavelength that you're on. Somebody saying things are happening to me, it's a victim, period. Allie and I, I hate this. She made me watch right before we went to bed. Your six, sit my 600 pound life. Have you ever watched that? Where it's about 600 pound people that are trying to lose weight. They go to this, uh, like Indian doctor who is the sweetest guy and he does a surgery to make their stomach smaller. They have to lose a bunch of weight or they do lose a weight, bunch of weight right off the bat. Then he kind of coaches them through trying to lose as much as they can. And the, the person that was on last night and most of them, that's how they get there in that situation in the first place, they're victims. Everything is happening to them. Everything, even things that like are so obvious to me as I'm watching it, like that was a great thing that just happened to you. They're looking at it, ah, that just happened. Crap. They're looking at only seeing the negative. It's unbelievable. So uh, to tie that back into that question, obviously Jay and I are in a similar wavelength. Like speaking of wavelengths, I sent Robbie Madison a message and said, I love, just kind of love what he does. I think he's hyper creative and think he's awesome. And I would love to do a team trip uh, to California. And with that, like, I thought it would be amazing to be able to meet him and for my team to learn how to do like backflips with him teaching us. I thought it was a cool concept. And he responded with a voice message. I just sent a text. He responded with a voice match message right away. He said, uh, AJ, would absolutely would love to have you. I've been following your stuff. He goes, I just saw a video of you sitting in the, doing a cold plunge, reading Think and Grow Rich. And he goes, I, I 
just by watching that video, I, I could tell you and I are on the same frequency, is what he said. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing how you start attracting those right people. But anyways, high level versus low level, you and I, Robbie Madison, guys on a slightly higher level are referring to conscious being being really highly conscious individual. Not The money has nothing to do with it. The money, again, is a byproduct. I think that a lot of people are able to make money uh, by being unconscious human being and by being kind of a, a bad person, <clears throat> just by like the law of averages. It's just going to happen. You're going to have those situations. But And it's also more than likely that person, their money is going to be short-lived and their money is also uh, the thing that they're chasing. So the, that's a horrible way to think. You're not going to be a... a you're not going to be a person that experiences joy if you're if the end goal is the dollar. That's a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. So I would consider that person, even if they had a billion dollars, to be low level. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I ask you something about chasing? If you're yeah. chasing something, is it running towards you or is it running away from no, you? No, because you don't have it, so you're keeping it in the future. Or you, th yeah. You're well, creating time in between the thing that if, time and distance it's just like if you're chasing it in your mind if you that's why when people like pray or try to manifest or whatever it is like there's a very big difference between like saying oh i want this and i want this and this that's not what praying if you know how to pray or like being able to kind of like visualize and and manifest mm -hmm. you you're simply supposed to visualize the thing and then attach and create the feeling with that visualization and the imagery that you're living the experience. So therefore it already exists. It's not way somewhere out in the future. You're mm -hmm. experiencing that thing as if it's existing right now. So sorry, this is gets so off top, not off topic, but just hold, hold on. Cause we're jumping all over the place. Yeah, There's so many good things <laughs> to talk about. Uh, my morning routine. Mm -hmm. Um, can I talk about it for a second? Of course, because this gonna, is your van. It's going to tie this whole thing in. <laughs> it's your van. So, and by the time I tie it in, I'm going to forget about what I was tying in. So sorry. <laughs> Morning routine. First of all, do you remember what you told me last time we were in this van? Yep. Uh, Two things. What? Well, okay. What were they? One, um, what feeling do you want to experience that day? And what version of yourself needs to show up in order to experience it? Oh, so going Before up to bed at night oh, and then oh. waking up in the morning, yes, what, yeah. there was something that you told me the, to take it a step further. Yes, uh, it was probably this. To marinate in the feeling of gratitude, the receiving emotion before you go to sleep. Was that it? No, no, no but that's a great one. Gee, what was the hell not, did I tell it you? It was not bringing my phone up. I oh, said, yes, I don't go on my yeah, phone before yeah. bed. I just put it upside down on my nightstand. And you said, well, one step further. Can you just leave it? downstairs yeah. yeah that's right it's been downstairs ever since really? yeah right. yeah it does help doesn't it yeah it's just another level up to that it's so what it does is it buys me a little bit of extra time before bed of of not being on it or and mm -hmm. also uh kind of navigating or getting away from the risk of or the chance of me accidentally yeah. getting on it mm -hmm. and then in the morning same thing it keeps me off it for an extra I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes probably. And then mm -hmm. it it also lowers the risk of me accidentally hearing it vibrate or lighting up or something. And I grab it because it's out of sight, out of mind. So morning routine now starts with night routine. Phone stays downstairs on the island. Phone goes on the island at like seven. So Allie and I wind down. We have another hour and a half downstairs where nothing is being done on that phone for that hour and a half. Then we go up to the bedroom and we hang out more, like she'll take a bath with Millie or I'll take a bath, bath with Millie and then we'll go to bed right now, 10.30. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of time off the phone before you go to bed. That's important. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't watch 600, my 600 pound life before, <laughs> but that's a different story. <laughs> Waking up, I, uh, the phone is nowhere to be found. I walk downstairs, I open the door so Bear can go outside. I shut the door. I then pour myself a bottle. This is an 18 ounce bottle. I, I would like a bigger one, I think. And I mix a half to three quarters of a packet of element. And as of this week, also one scoop of creatine into my water and I drink the whole thing. So that's the very first thing I do. Then I immediately walk outside and there's another level I could take to this too. My shoes are on. I think my shoes should probably be off, even if it's cold. If you want to get technical, uh, you can be more grounded. <laughs> if you want to get a little higher level with it. Yeah. So I walk outside with Bear and 
you've seen the my backyard is beautiful. I can walk along like an apple orchard, and then mm-hmm. there's a there's a gate at, to another farm way at the far end. So I walk all the way to the gate. I then turn around, and sun is perfectly up mm-hmm. over the mansions up on the hill, mm-hmm. and I will stare into the sun. I'll shut my eyes, and this is kind of a whole different like meditation method. I'll look up. 45 degrees, which if there's something to that, apparently it helps you go drop down into different wavelengths. Mm-hmm. And I then do what I've learned by reading a book called the Silva Mind Control Method. Yeah, Jose Silva. It's just a meditation induction essentially is what it is to bring you down into like from beta to alpha. And then if you're really good, like gamma or theta. Um, so I count from 50 down to zero. That's basically his induction method. And once you practice it, He says that you can then get down. So like step one for the first few weeks is practicing from 50 to zero. Then you go from 25 to zero, then 10 to zero, and then you can do it from five to zero. And you tie it in with something physical. So he says you tie it in with touching your your thumb to your pointer finger, and then you count from five to zero, and a really high-level person that's good at meditating can drop into that in five seconds. And so with that, you can get to, you can remember anything. Because as, as as long as you were there, or even if this is a different hole, this is another level, even if you're not there, it's all connected. You can remember that thing. That's what psychics are. I believe that that exists because it's somebody that can access a certain thing. I'm sure a lot of TV shows you see in that crap is, one, um, there's probably people that aren't legit, but I'm sure that there are people that are legit because it's all connected. Anyhow. What the heck are they talking about? You count from, right now I'm counting from 50 to zero because I'm still a novice. Mm-hmm. 50 to zero, when I get to zero, um, I feel I feel like I could take a nap, but not quite. That's kind of where you want to be. Mm-hmm. And then I just visualize whatever I feel like visualizing that day. So this morning was, um, oh, is that just visualizing our, uh, like a future home? Mm-hmm. And I was, I've, I work on these vi- visualizations all the time. So like that home is, I know that home. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you already see it. You oh, that it home, it's like. detailed. Yeah. I could I could walk you through it. Yeah. Like really, really, really detailed. <laughs> and I, I combine that with just a feeling of gratitude already. Like I can open my eyes for a second and scan where I am right now. And some people, like that's a privilege. Where I scan now is unbelievable. It's a dream home. You know what I mean? But I can look further up that hill and see the mansion and just like it's I can see it and I feel really grateful and I close my eyes again and I'm visualizing that future home so that's what manifesting is um and then I jog back with bear feel really really good and then still once I get back inside I will then eat breakfast and read this morning I re- was re- started rereading the power of now and then I'll go on my phone mm-hmm. imagine imagine that process versus the very easy alternative to which I once did forever. Alarm goes off. Alarm goes off. By the way, when that alarm goes <laughs> off, I had a conversation. Uh, he probably won't mind me saying this. That I had a conversation with my friend Dom the other day, and I was talking about that, that exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I go, man, do you, do, again, this is could be considered a privileged thing to say, but I don't like that either, because if you're calling somebody privileged and that's just you're telling yourself that you can't do it or you can't i mean everybody could do this correct yeah it might take some time to be able to work towards it but everybody could have the the privilege of not having to set an alarm uh so that's part of my morning routine i don't set an alarm but if you do have to set an alarm make sure that it's not a tone that makes you want to kill yourself as soon as you wake up dom goes aj as soon as my alarm goes off i just want to i'm just so pissed off and I'm so angry. <laughs> and I'm like, that's how you're waking up every morning, dude? Yeah. You're joking about it, but that's not good. It's mega not good. <laughs> that's the least good thing ever. Because I obviously, what the heck is that day going to look like after you wake up pissed off to that stupid same alarm? It's a stock iPhone alarm. Horrible. Mm-hmm. It's the worst sound ever. Like, uh, whoever's in charge of Apple now, change that alarm. <laughs> Allie has an alarm that when we do need to use one, It is waking up to like chimes and peaceful like birds in the background (laughs) and it gets gradually louder and louder so you'll hear it Mm -hmm. 
but it's nice. It's really nice. You yeah. wake up to something nice. You get to w- wake up instead of have to wake up. You yeah, can see where that of, there's those two. Are <laughs> <things>. <laughs> <laughs> Just like what the? Well, you no, know it's crazy. The, did you ever notice this? I wonder if you ever noticed. We both go to the same gas station down the road. Yeah. The mobile gas station. Go in and buy something next time you go, and it'll never leave your mind. Now, is when you go in, the process for like using your debit card is, is way too involved. But when it's time to remove your card successfully, you've made payment. You're a customer. The ultimate reward for you. It's this sound that sounds like this. It's like, bah, bah, bah. and I'm like, oh, yeah. and it's such a negative sound. I'm like, did my card work? Yeah, it worked. You're all good. Wait, what? And it's so funny <laughs> that I literally think that I need to get a different card. When it first happened, the first couple of times, I was like, I can give you cash. They're like, no, you're all set. And then the next time, oh no, you're all set. And then I'm like, oh my God, it's the tone. The Isn't tone is so negative. That's the card when the the insert card reader tone when yeah. it works, it totally sounds like a tone that insert card reader. That yeah. your card failed. Yeah, it sounds like I'm like, dude, I want to hear, I want to hear Allie's tone. I want to hear, thank you, Jason. Like some OnlyFans girl being like, thanks, Jay. Your purchase is complete. By the way, you should be able to edit that for your own. You should be able to personalize your card so that when you do that scan it, it's sick. got a personalized you know, thank you to yourself. For- I like that. Or it could go the other way. If you're saving for a house and you haven't done a good job about it, be like, dude, really? <laughs> yeah, really, bro? Right. Really, bro? Depending on what the purchase is and how <laughs> exactly, much it is, exactly. it, it either validates you or it yells back at you. <laughs> exactly. That's a great idea. Somebody should coin good- that. Yeah. If anyone wants to go into business, uh, reach out to AJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, I tell you what, operating at that level to elaborate further on the King Friday question, the you you can at uh, that level the scale is infinite so mm-hmm. you know like the bottom of the tier are victim mentalities the bottom of the tier are uh people that think things are happening to them constantly the, the mm-hmm. it's a person stuck in traffic and reacting to the traffic and flipping somebody off it's um there's so many levels to it that's why it's a good way to describe it because mm-hmm. There, there's infinite levels to the low level person as well. Um, can you think of other obvious examples to, so I can continue to just draw this image for people for a, a low level person, like uh, how, how is a low level person reacting? Give, give me examples. Well, first of all, in my I walk time- outside right now and I, the, the freaking <laughs> the, the stupid sump pump that has nowhere to dump to just dumps on the driveway and I step on it and guess what? It's partially frozen right now. So it's the slipperiest thing of all time. And I slip and I fall on my back. All right, let's go. There's a low level way to react to that. And there's a higher level way to react to that. I like it. Okay. So let, yeah, let me give you my version. So I'm going to give you my low level version of what I see in your front yard. Okay. I'm looking out in your front yard and I'm seeing that the trees look kind of bare. And then this tree right here. This is the low level version? This is low level. Okay. It looks like this could maybe be trimmed. And I don't know, but now that you point it out, like that water in the driveway in the middle is really bothering me. It's the high level version of me is realizing, and it's so funny that that's what I saw. Yeah. I looked for trouble. I literally, all mm-hmm. I did just now is I looked for problems and I looked for trouble and I found it. Now I'm going to shift to I don't like, I'm going to agree with Allie. Okay. I'm not a big fan of high level. I'm just a fan of like, perspe- just simple perspective. Like, or, I'm and, try- to me, I literally picture a, a ladder and I picture the ladder of improvement and getting to the higher level of change. But then again, you could look at it as just like, because it is kind of black and white. It's either you're you're looking at this from the perspective of, of good or you're looking at it from the perspective of bad, kind yeah. of. Most people call it self-actualization, but that word's pretty hard to say. I even struggle with it myself. But to go back to this example, if I look now as a AJ Catanzaro high-level thinker, I see, I actually see, I think it's cool, like the um, the shadows of the trees. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the sun really, really cool. Through the leaves, even, you could look at the leaves as a nuisance. I think the leaves are look great. The color, the orange reminds me of fall. It brings me back like nostalgia looking at the leaves, the red barn across the street. Like everybody like wants red a red barn. Yeah. And they, they sell really cool little trinkets 
and you can just walk in. It's it, awesome. It, dude, literally, and have the, you ever done it? There's right never up? anybody there, so it's like an honor system. Yes. So I, know, I don't know why, but I haven't done it. You have to do it. So there's eggs. Literally, AJ, if you're looking outside of the moto van in AJ's driveway, you will see a small farm little stand. farm stand. And you just, it's honors. And you go in, there's lights in there. It's like beautiful. It's cool. It's beautiful. Yeah. You go in there and it's like, you want some eggs? Leave a couple bucks. You want an apple? Hey, leave 50 cents or a buck, whatever it is, That's right? Great. And so what if you, and so what? what's the learning lesson here is if you look for trouble, you'll find it. If you look for good, you'll find it because that becomes your filter. Your focus is your filter. So if you focus on looking for problems and you do that from a victim mindset, you will find plenty of problems. If you guys enjoyed this podcast clip and you want to listen to full episodes, make sure you go download them on Spotify and Apple Music. If you want to watch full episodes or be a person that sends in your own video submission, go to club.themotoacademy.com and subscribe to join the Moto Academy family today.